Hello everyone, my name is an enemy champ and today we're going to go over how to revive allies through the workshop. Uh, our first example is going to be teabag to revive them instantly. Uh, our second example will be uh, how to create a timer and have a check in place so that when you're within the radius of the person the timer will tick down. Uh, for our first example we're going to add a rule to check for any allies and when they're dead around you. So to do that first we need to define the area that we're looking at. So we need to define the radius. So let's go ahead and define variables. This will be for the whole server. So we'll do set global variable r radius uh, to 3. So that's 3 meters. Now we'll go ahead and have the next rule set. This will be teabag to res instantly. What we're going to do in this one is we're going to make it so that there's a check in place for when they crouch, if our person's alive, uh, and we're going to check how close we are to the person and if they're dead. So is alive player so that's gonna be us and then we're gonna go ahead and make sure that we're crouching we're gonna check the distance between us and them so distance between the event player and the closest player to us and they need to be on our team so we'll do team of event player so that means that they're on the same team as the event player and the event player is us all right, distance between us is going to be less than or equal to the global radius that we set earlier. So global variable r. Now let's make sure that they're dead. Is dead. The closest player to the event player on our team. So team of the event player. Now notice that I'm saying that the center is event player and not the actual position of event player. So position of event player would look like that. We want the event player to be the center and not the position because if we do the position, it'll include us as an option and we don't want that. We want to look at our teammates, not us. So we set us as the center and is dead equals to true. So we're making sure that this person is dead. Uh, it doesn't really matter the order, but I'll, I'll put that above this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do the actions of setting the player variable P for our event player, which is us and we're going to set that to the closest player. So we already know that the player meets all the criteria that we set in the conditions. So we know we're getting the right person. But we want to make sure that we define it ahead of time. That way we don't have to keep putting closest player to, closest player to, closest player to. Every single time we want to do something, we could just use this variable instead. So it'll look like this when we resurrect them. Resurrect the player variable P. Boom, we just selected our player that we defined earlier. So we resurrect that person, and now this is basically done, but I'm going to add some effects in. We're going to make it visible to everyone. We're going to have a good pickup effect. We're going to use yellow. I like the radius one, but now this one's different. You have to use the position of event player. And the reason for that is it doesn't update if you just use the target. You have to go ahead and do the position of whatever the target is. It's kind of silly. So now we'll do big message. And then what this will do is it'll make a big display in the center of the screen. And what it'll say is I want it to have a hero icon for the person that we res. It'll say the hero's name and then it'll say resurrected. So like picture Roadhog, Roadhog resurrected. So we'll put the header. It's going to be uh, a string. And the way that it works is you need to do 0, 1, and 2 so that you can use all of these fields. And you want to make sure that there's just blanks in between them. So what we'll do is the hero icon string. So that way we can get the picture for the hero of the player we defined earlier. Now we'll say the hero's name. Hero of the player we defined earlier. And it'll say resurrected. So we have to use another string within the string to say resurrected. So see what it looks like to string resurrected. There you go. And there's like a bunch of different fields there. So we got that. This is done. Uh, but I want to add another effect. And this effect will be a ring to go ahead and show the radius of where you can resurrect this person within. So we're going to do res create ring on death. So player died. We're going to make sure that the ring doesn't already exist. So we're going to do player variable. We're going to use U. 
we're going to make sure that that is equal to null. And that basically is saying that this variable hasn't def been defined yet. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and create the effect. It's going to be visible to only the people that are on your team when you die. So people, so when you die, it'll create this ring and it'll only show it to the people that are on your team. We're going to make it a ring. We're going to go yellow. It's going to be the position of the person that died. The radius is going to be the global variable r, which is our global radius. And we'll define that as a variable. And we're going to use u and last entity created. All right, so now that we have that created, we're going to go ahead and have a way to delete it. So delete ring on alive. So when a player goes to this alive state, we're going to delete that ring. We're going to have that ongoing for each player. Let's make sure that each one has that. Yep. All right. And the way that conditions work is the condition, once it returns that it's true, it will run these actions and it'll only do that once unless this changes to false and then goes back to truth and it'll run this once again. That's how conditions work. So it'll run multiple times, but only when the conditions change and then go back to true again. So we're going to go ahead and delete, well, destroy the effect for player variable u. Now we're going to set that variable to null. So that way we can use that previous function again. And we're done. So we set that to null, that way this one can then run again, because this has to be null. So we're done. We can go ahead and test the code now and make sure it all works. Alright, let's watch Roadhog die to Reaper. There we go. Let's make sure we can't res on the outside of the circle. We do not. In the circle. We resurrected him. There you go, our code is done, it works. If you want to go ahead and see the second example, go ahead and watch the next video. Otherwise, thank you for watching.